Ah, the end of an era, but not the end of an actual generation, because we still have Hot Gold, Soul, Silver, but this is the end of the Diamond, Pearl, Platinum era. It's kind of interesting, all the mechanics that go with that, we're not going to see them anymore. No more level X's, no more SP Pokemon, no more multi, you know, plus weakness, it's all times two from here on out. Kind of weird. Hey guys, this is Game of Cow. welcome to another Pokemon TCG History video. As we said, we're on to Platinum here, the 11th set of the Diamond Pearl stuff, and the final one to boot. What a strange time this has been. We've seen, like, the start of this era not quite marred by the fact that we had stuff like Cessation Crystal, Scramble Energy, etc. But a lot of very strong things that took like three or more energy to use come into play. And then as soon as they all rotated, it was just like, nah, we're not allowed to play any of that now. We have to play just uh, one energy, two energy things. And then SP came into play and now it's just like, uh, you can't even play evolution cards. Obviously you can, and we have, but uh, it's just... Yeah, it's been a very strange time, to say the least. But we have some cool stuff to look over here. Some of this, once again, kind of like the last set, although maybe even more so than the last set. A lot of this isn't going to actually come into play until we have like double colorless energy, or a couple of the cards from Hot Gold Soul Silver Base. It's more than just that as we go through here. But there are some good cards to talk about, and we'll go over them the best that we can. So, what I have over here is some extra cards that will be putting into context with these because a lot of these are not Pokemon that have just got one printing during this era so we have a little bit of context stuff we've got the Pokemon Rumble promos technically out at this point as well but these are all joke cards as the game was as well oh ho but um the only one that's like even worth talking about is Venusaur just because it has a self-heal thing here but Pepper tried it midweek, it's terrible because it takes four energy and that's too expensive. Maybe with double colorless you could potentially do something here, but even then it's free energy, so whatever. But there are some contextual things in this set that could make it work, and there are a couple of Venusaurs already in format that you could maybe get some utility out of as well. Healing special conditions and being able to deal special conditions, kind of cool I suppose. The titular Arceus in this set has a lot of variation, as you would expect. Every type of uh, Pokemon is available for Arceus. Arceus has its own special rule as well, where you can play as many of this card in your deck as you like. So if you wanted to, for some reason, play 30 Colorless Arceus, you could. But uh, basically what this ends up amounting to is that you get to play any number of these that you want and any number of the level X's too. So your entire deck consists of Arceus and there are several options that you have within that. It's not the best deck out there but I have managed to build a decent version of it. We might see it uh, in the games this round, I don't know. One thing I do want to note with the Arceus though, is why I've got them as a separate thing here as well, is the artwork for them. This was a special subset of this set, kind of like the Unknowns were in uh, one of the Gen 3 sets and whatnot, where it's its own little rarity to this as well. It's a, it's like an Arceus rare. <laughs> it's in its own set. And if you put them all together like this, you can see the Ripple Swell that's literally the attack from the Colorless Arceus, the Originator, is available, you know, it's like it swells out as you go, and if you put them all like this, you get to see the entire pattern, and it's very cool. This actually does translate to real life stuff too. The promo Arceus that's here, as garbage as it is, still follows this philosophy too. The Colorless Arceus is the uh, progenitor, so it is the middle of the wave, and it's, it's just neat to see the persistent thing there. Just a quick mention on the Cresselia Dark Ride, just because they are promos here. They're pretty bad, though. You uh, you do get benefits if you have the other of the Pokemon in play as well. Like, this Dark Ride does 20 more damage if you have a Cresselia in play. And if there's a Dark Ride in play, this Cresselia gets to heal damage from itself, which it needs because it is 80-10 uh, for every damage counter that's on it. Honestly, these aren't really worth anything. Just, uh, it's kind of cool that they put the differences aside for once, you know? So I think it would be remiss, even though I want to talk about the trainers and stuff first, it'd probably be remiss to not talk about the Arceus cards first in the Arceus set. So the main one that you need is the colorless one. For no energy, if you have six Arceus in play and each of them have a different type, you search your deck for up to six basic energy, 
and attach them to different Arceus that you have in play. It says a different Pokemon, but you've got to have Arceus, right? So, effectively, your goal in the Arceus deck is to amass six of the nine different types that are in the TCG. We've got Dark, which for Dark and Colorless does 20 damage, and 80 if the opponent has uh, more prizes left, uh, like if you have more prizes left. So if you're behind in the game, you do 80 for two, which is probably the strongest single attack in this uh, this deck. You've got the grass one that nobody really plays because it's bad, but if you are worried about spread, I guess you could do so. For grass colors, you do 30 and remove three damage counters from each of your bench Pokemon. Not the active, critically, but the bench stuff gets healed, so that's kind of cool. The fire Arceus is the second most common one. For a fire double colors, you do 80, and if you flip tails, you've got to discard two energy from your active. That's your main damage dealer which I guess is pretty good, but uh, yeah, the whole flip tails discard two thing is annoying. With double colorless coming out next set, that actually becomes a bit less uh, crazy to, to spam, but still, it is a bit annoying. The water Arceus is the most consistent damage output that you get. For water double colorless, you do 50, and your attacks are not affected by resistance, poke powers, poke bodies, or any other effects. You still hit for weakness critically, but it means that if you are going up against, say, the uh, Gengar from this set, which is resistant to colorless, and you copy this attack, we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah. You can you can deal with that, or if you go against another Grass Arceus, this guy can still hit it for resi for free resistance, which is kind of cool. The actual attack on the Colorless Arceus is Sky Spear, probably my favorite attack in this entire deck. For any free energy, you snipe 80 to one of the opponent's Pokémon, and then Lost Zone all of the energy that is on the Arceus that you attacked with. So. Yeah, this is your Garchomp C for the deck. You do have to loss zone the energy, which means you can't ever get them back, so your deck needs to have a lot of energy in it in order to actually make this work, but it is still a very valuable attack. This will one-shot Claydols and stuff on the bench, and quite often, if the opponent ends up sending up something that's too hard to KO in the active slot, you can just kind of go around it by hitting with this instead. Lightning Arceus is pretty good. For a Lightning Colorless, you do 30, and it forces you to switch the Arceus with one of your bench, but that's fine because you can switch to one that doesn't have a lot of energy or any energy on it, really, and you can tank with that, which is pretty good. The Psychic one for Psychic Double Colorless does 40 and also Confusion. This is your one kind of disruption attack in the deck, so it's, it's fine. Um, normally, you don't care too much to have this one out, but you just need different types, so you've got to play some of them like that. The Fighting one, which is based on a ground type, does 60 for a Fighting and Double Colorless, and 10 to each of your own bench. So you really don't want to use this attack if you can avoid it, but sometimes the numbers don't add up for using like the water one and whatnot, and sometimes you've got to go in with this anyway. Key thing to note, this one has a lightning resistance, so it can be used as a Luxray check if you need it to, so that's kind of cool. And then the metal one for metal double colorless does 40 and prevents all effects of attacks to the active Arceus done by level X Pokemon next turn. Not the most impactful, to be honest, but it's fine. Right, like if you're if you're up against a deck that really relies on level X's to do big damage, think of something like the uh, Luxray potentially. Although you've got to watch it because Luxray will probably just go around you. But like Blaziken even doesn't really do damage if you have this out. So I don't know, it's pretty cool. The problem is uh, a lot of these attacks are just too situational. But the situations are still kind of fun, right? I think the grass and the metal ones are the ones that I really don't like. I can see a use for the grass one, but it's just... You've got to also take into account the fact that there's different retreat costs and HPs and stuff for them here as well. There's a couple at 70 HP, but they've got the best attacks and just one retreat. The fire one being the single retreat, 80 HP is pretty good. The 90 HP ones are water, metal, and uh, grass, but they all have two energy retreat costs, as does the fighting one, so that can be a bit of a turnoff as well. The level X's are, well, two of them are decent, one of them is kind of bad, but uh, they all have 120 HP, no weakness, no re resistance, and a one retreat cost. Really wish it was a zero retreat, that would have been probably busted, but it would have been so cool uh, just to have no stats down the bottom, right? All of them have the Poké Body where they uh, share the same type as their previous level. So even though you remove the resistances off of a lot of these, you do also remove the weakness, which is pretty important. 
So, you know, you're no longer fighting weak with this guy, which is actually key, key because like half of them are weak to fighting. <laughs> so pretty good thing to be able to remove that. The other thing that they have is obviously their own attack as well, or in the main Arceus' case, a Poke Body, where you get to copy the attack of any Arceus you have and play as your own. You may have heard, as I've been going through this, I've been referring to, like, effectively referring to copying the attacks of going, well, if you use this on a different Arceus, it's probably fine, right? Or use this with, uh, especially Fast Wave, like, use it with a different type and hit for weakness that way. This is why, because you play three or four of this one, and you get to level X whichever one you have in the active slot, and you then can copy the attacks from wherever on the board, but still hit the weakness. So this would allow you to use, say, the fire one's attack with the lightning one and hit for weakness against a water type instead, which is very, very cool. So it it's a toolbox. That's that's the idea for the deck. This also means that any Arceus can copy Sky Spear and be a threat to anywhere anything else on the board, which is very strong. The other two don't have that ability, they have their own attack instead, so you get the attack of the base form you've leveled up from, and also the attack of this guy. So in this case you've got Grass Fire Colas to do 100, but if you flip Tails it's only 50 instead. Uh, yeah, that's clearly one of the poorer attacks that you can go in for. I can still see like a reason to play this but only if you're actually playing the Grass Arceus as well, and I don't think the Grass Arceus is very good, so you're probably never going with this. If you need to hit that 100 in order to stay in the game, then it's just very unreliable, right? 50 damage is still okay if you're hitting for weakness, you can probably make it work, but it's just not good enough to be honest. And then the other Arceus here, this one did see quite a bit of play before Double Colorless came out and made Sky Spear the strategy of choice. Psychic Bolt for Lightning Psychic Colorless does 100 flat, but you have to always discard a Lightning and a Colorless attack, no, Lightning and a Psychic attached to the uh, Arceus here. That's why it's Psychic Bolt, of course. This one's really kind of good because it does give you extra reach than what you would normally have. 100 damage is definitely the highest output that you can hit in this deck. 80 is normally what you'd expect. But the guaranteed discard and the specific tight discard as well makes it very unwieldy to use. So I personally have not been playing it, but I know it was played as a one-off most of the time in these decks in the past. The thing I find is that Every time I use this, because you have to level up active, every time I have this, I just want the other one instead. And, you know, I just want Omniscient so I can copy whatever attack I want. So it is what it is. Arceus as a deck does struggle a fair bit against stage 2 decks at the moment because of their plus weakness instead of times 2. Because you can't play late boundary since you need your support pieces here. It's a good time to talk about the trainers as a result because we are playing uh, in the set named Arceus. We have two big support cards that we can talk about here. Beginning Door is an item card that searches your deck for any Arceus and puts it into hand. This includes the level X's because it does not specify uh, otherwise, like Arceus is still named, you know, Arceus level X is still named Arceus by the game rules. So. Yeah, this actually lets you search for your level X's as well. So not only does it help you get set up for the Ripple Swell, but it also helps late game or mid game once you've got your bench set up to get the level X so that you can then copy all the attacks, which is really good. You might be wondering though, because Ripple Swell does take energy from the deck and puts them onto all of your different Arceus. It's like, how are you going to fuel any singular attack when all of them are two or three energy and your energy has to get spread around in the acceleration? That's where the field spell comes in uh, for, for the Yugi Mans. Ultimate Zone, the stadium card here, lets you move any energy, not just basic energy, mind you, any energy attached to one of your bench Pokemon to the active Arceus as often as you like. Now, you're not going to be playing any non-Arceus Pokemon in here because you do need to Ripple Swell, and that requires your bench to just be Arceus. You might see some lists that play like one Unknown Q or one Yuxi or something. Uh, they're pushing it, but... Yeah, um, most of the time it's just going to be Arceus, and this lets you just move all of those energy that have been on the bench to wherever, you know, whichever attacker you're going to use, and it's great. 
absolutely awesome effect here. This is one of the few decks in the format, outside, maybe BTS is a thing, but this is one of the few decks in the format that will actually play a Stadium card. So you can often, even if you play four, you're going to win Stadium Wars pretty much all the time of this deck. So it's good. The deck is fine, right? It hits basically everything for weakness, but even then it doesn't necessarily kill everything because it can't hit Stage 2s hard enough. But Stage 2s are not the easiest of things to play right now, and often they are played because they have level X's involved, and level X's of times 2 weakness that you can kill. So it's neat. As far as the other trainers that we have in this set, uh, Bench Shield I think is new. Um, so long as this tool is attached to a Pokemon on your bench, that Pokemon doesn't take any damage from attacks. So this can actually be used to protect your Claydol from the uh, Dragon Rush, uh, or Sky Spear in this case as well, instead of using Unknown G. So you do still get hit by damage counters, so Gengar would still hit you, but actual raw damage on the bench stuff is a bit more common at the moment. So cool tool at the very least for that. Buffer Piece gets a reprint here. This is the last time we're going to see this because any effect like this after this one stays in play. So yeah, 20 damage reduction for the next turn, but uh, that's all it does, so whatever. These tools are facilitated by Department Store Go, and we are going to see a couple more after this as well. Hey, honestly, this is a Hot Gold Soul Silver supporter that got printed one set early. It's just the artwork of it, right? Search your deck for up to three Pokemon tool cards, put them into hand. That's an okay supporter if you are playing a lot of tool cards. We probably don't want this like ever. Cyrus's Conspiracy already gets the energy gain for the SP decks and yeah, it's hard to play a bunch of tools otherwise. There aren't too many impactful ones even though this is going to say something about it. Still not really too good I don't think. Energy Restore gets a reprint here from, this was from Diamond Pearl Base otherwise so it's nice to get this for when that eventually rotates. Kind of cool artwork for it too, I suppose. Uh, Expert Belt is the huge uh, redefiner of this set. Pokemon that this tool is attached to gains 20 extra HP and does 20 more damage to the opponent's active Pokemon. However, if it is KO'd by any means, the opponent takes one more prize card. That's obviously kind of rough because it does mean that you are now introducing multi prizes into a single prize format. But 20 extra HP and 20 extra damage, critically enough, is very, very big. And this card definitely saw one or two of play in a ton of decks. I also just love the artwork for this one, by the way. It really is just in that come at me pose, even though it's literally just a belt. That's hilarious to me. I don't know. This card is insane. You won't generally see more than like two copies of it in any deck, and usually not even more than one, because most of the time you can't afford to give up that many prizes. But this can this can fudge numbers like nothing else. And all of the aggressive decks that take one or two energy, you can just throw this on anyway. Even SP decks are reasonable to put this in if their attack costs are low enough. So definitely look out for this. It's going to see a lot of play. Unfortunately, despite seeing play in Modern, actually, in one of Sander's uh, many control decks, Lucky Egg is not really going to see any play here. If the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, you draw until you have 7 cards in hand. Thankfully, it doesn't have to also be active, so there is that. You could probably put it on a Clay Doll and then go from there. The problem is, most of the time, you're not going to draw very many cards off of this. It requires the opponent to KO you, which is pretty bad. It's you, You'd have to play Department Store Girl in order to search this, which feels really bad. And it doesn't advance the game state, so not really super useful here, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, Professor Oak's Visit gets another reprint here. I hate this card, dude. I've seen this card played in like, Arclis and some other stuff here that just needs more hard draw, but it's just so bad. I can't ever justify playing this card, unfortunately. Um, it's funny, because TV Reporter was insane, but it, this just isn't the right format for this. We've got too many other things that are too important, I suppose. And then there's fossils in here as well, the old Amber, the Dome Fossil and Helix Fossil get reprints because they have other Pokemon in this set that, that use them, but they're just terrible because they're fossils, there's so many restrictions on them, and old Amber still doesn't count as a fossil card, so you can't use it with Fossil Excavation. Which for some reason Fossil Excavation was not reprinted in here, 
despite there being a fossil focus. I don't know, it's weird. On to the rest of the stuff. We got three other level X's to look at, and they all have some cards from previous sets to talk about here. The main one is Gengar. Gengar is gross. The actual Gengar in this set is gross. The previous Gengar from Stormfront is mega gross. And uh, the one that we get in Heart God Soul Silver is uh, kind of gross as well. So, yeah, Gengar just gets all the good cards right now. Level down as its power means that once per turn, you can de basically de rank one of the opponent's level X's. You shuffle the level X card from their whatever level X you choose into their deck. So this would really mess with the Arceus stuff, right? Because most of the Arceus are like 70 or 80 HP. The big guys are 120, so that's a big jump. And then you just strip that away and it's like, uh, okay, now I have like no health to survive hits with, which is uh, kind of good for the Gengar deck because they kill you very easily with Poltergeist. It does have an attack as well, Compound Pain for double Psychic and a Colorless. Does 30 damage to each of the opponent's Pokemon that already has damage counters on them. That sounds a bit situational. I mean, Gengar has been known to spread counters in the past, and this one is no exception because uh, the Gengar in this set that's actually good, there are two of them, but uh, I guess you could snipe 40 with this one, but it takes two energy, so probably not. But the one that's actually good actually has Curse again the Fossil Gengar ability. Once during your turn, you may move a damage counter from one of the opponent's Pokemon to another one. So you can spread the damage around, make sure that everything is damaged on their board. You, I guess you could just dedicate the spread deck to like Gallade, uh, S, uh, Gallade uh, 4 level X or something and just go with all spread if you want, but you don't have to. This is perfectly fine as is. And Shadow Skip for two Psychic and the Colorless does 60, 10 to one of the opponent's bench, and then you get to switch the Gengar with one of your bench Pokemon. That's huge. Uh, not only does this have no retreat cost as well, so it's just, again, all the Gengars have got zero retreat in this format. It's insane. But not only does it have no retreat itself, but it also lets you switch into the previous Gengar that we had which is still a colossal douchebag and honestly one of the most annoying cards that we have in the format because of Fainting Spell. It's just like you knock this guy out and if the, if the opponent flips heads they KO you as well. It's like great, you know, fantastic, whatever. Also no retreat on this too so you just go straight back in. This is one of the cool things about Expert Belt though. If you put Expert Belt on the Gengar, that's this one, you get to do 80 and then switch the Gengar away so the two prize penalty thing is much less likely to happen. So yeah, just get extra damage and basically none of the downsides. It's really cool. But yeah, we can't talk about the Gengars without talking about this piece of doo-doo over here. Uh, Shadow Room is still really strong. Put three damage counts on one of the opponent's Pokemon and if they have a Poke Power then it's six instead. So very much punishes the whole Yuxi Claydol thing very easily. Unknown G is hard to play at the moment because you tend to need a lot of other stuff in the deck as well and it can brick if you start with it so yeah it's it's less likely to go checked at this point like I used to play two or three unknown G in a lot in a lot of the decks at Stormfront era just to get rid of this guy can't really do that anymore and then we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the ghastly from Diamond Pearl base no it's not even Diamond Pearl base it's Stormfront Diamond Pearl base one was terrible for zero energy, this one lets you make the opponent unable to play trainers next turn. So, <laughs> great. You know, it's got its own inbuilt trainer lock. It's got uh, the Poltergeist as well, which uh, takes advantage of the fact that the opponent's got a bunch of trainers in their hand to do crazy amounts of damage. We've got the damage manipulation and hit and run tactics of this Gengar. And we also have the level X now, so the opponent uh, just gets a ton of spread taken uh, put down put down on them as well. Also the fact that this has got 30 extra HP compared to the other two Gengar means that you just end up getting so much value out of this. It's gross. It's also resistant to colorless, which is a bad bad news bears moment for Salamence over here, which is uh, otherwise kind of cool. Uh, 160 HP is Goliath for a level X. It is I think second highest. Maybe I think was it 170 was on the Rhyperior, I think? That might have been it. Maybe that was 160 as well, I don't know. Either way, it's tied for the second highest, which is, or highest otherwise, which is really, really good. Double Fall is also an insane ability. If you level X the Salamence, then 
during that turn, if you KO something with the Salamence's attack, you take an extra prize cut. That's not a mechanic we see very often, for good reason, because it usually ends up being very unbalanced if it's actually decent. This one's super difficult to get out, and the Menses are not the easiest of things to play by themselves, but it's there. You can do big hits with this, especially with Expert Belt, right? You do 120 with a Steam Blast over here. It's a very expensive attack cost, though. Water, Fire, Double Colorless, 100 damage, discard, and energy on this thing. That's rough. The Salamence from this set does try to alleviate that a little bit, though. It has Top Accelerator, which is the Crush Draw from Delta Tyranitar and Walrein back in uh, the Gen 3 era. Where once during the turn before you attack, you look at the top card of your deck. If it's a basic energy, you attach it to one of your Pokemon. The difference here is that if it isn't a basic energy, you discard it. Which is not what the old ones did, I think. The old ones just put it back on top of the deck. So, if you have multiple of these in play, you do get multiple chances to accelerate energy. Because you're refreshing what card is on the top of the deck. Unfortunately, we don't really have efficient ways of manipulating our Todd deck right now. I think there is a Del Caddy that was used for Blast Caddy that puts two energy from your discard on top of the deck. You could maybe get away with using that. There's, um, uh, what was it? There's a Dialga that when you bench it, you take three Pokemon and or energy from your discard and top deck them. So, like, I suppose that could be a bit of an easier way of doing it, is just to have one of those. But... Yeah, it's very hard to manipulate the top deck like that at the moment, which is a shame, because otherwise this isn't too bad. Uh, Water Fire Colors to do 50 and 20 Snipe is a little bit expensive, but if you could set the opponent's board up properly, you could take four prizes with the level X on this. Note that the level X did not say, when we get back down to it, the level X did not say that you had to KO the opponent's active with its attack. And this is the one big snipe attack that the uh, Salamence has that's like reasonable to power up. So you could technically KO two Pokemon and take four prizes with this if you set the opponent's board up right. The problem is Dragon Claw is a really bad attack. So like four colors to do 70 just isn't cutting it. So yeah, you're then kind of stuck having to power Steam Blast every turn and that might not happen. Also, you're weak to Colorless, which gets you caught in the crossfire of everything that hits Garchomp for weakness, really, so... Although, then again, most of those were SPs targeted, so maybe it's not so bad. Alternative options, however, involve another Salamence over here that if the opponent's got a Pokémon that has a max HP of 120 or more in play, you get to ignore all the Colorless that's in the attacks of the Mets. That's kind of... Honestly, really strong. If the opponent's got a big Pokemon in play, that means you just do Water Fire for either 120 to discard the two of them, or the 100 and discard one energy. That honestly makes it really tempting, because big Pokemon are definitely in the format. Its combustion attack is not amazing, but it is a cheap cost at the very least. Fire Colors to do 50, so that might come up at some points. But yeah, there's there is a deck here. I think I just not convinced that it's really that strong. Memory Berry is possible for the deck though because Bagon has Rage and Rage is for double colorless. 10 plus 10 for each damage counter that's on it. So this with the Salamence here, you have Rage for no energy, which is kind of, kind of good. Like if it wasn't for the colorless target hate, I this this might be considerable. The main issue is the well, two things. Gengar not only undercuts this because it only has 110 HP, but it also is resistant to Colorless. So you can't really KO Gengar with the stuff here. And the fact that you are weak to Colorless means that anything that hits the Garchomp and Flygon of the format, including Flygon itself, will just kill you as well and you have to dedicate your whole deck to actually making it work, so good luck trying to do anything else. I don't know. And then finally on the level X front, the last one we'll ever see is Tangrowth level X. Um, this has got 130 HP, pretty good for a stage 1 level X to be honest, and once during your turn before you attack, if you flip heads, you can heal 4 damage counters from one of your Pokemon. 
This is not a hard once per turn, but being a level X, unless you play two of this and two Tangrowth, then you are only going to get one of this per turn. It's uh, Blissey, but without the discard, and it heals twice as much, but only 50% of the time. As a stage 1 level X, that's really hard to justify, but if you're playing an actual Tangrowth deck, this would be a reasonable enough top end, to be honest, maybe as a one of because its big growth attack is also pretty solid, search your discard pile for as many grass energy as you like and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like, for a single grass of its own. Uh, there is a very aggressive Felicity and uh, Sableye style engine that you can play with this in order to just get a bunch of energy discarded. That part is not a problem, but Net also could potentially discard them, so you could get a ton of acceleration off of that. Problem is, it's a stage 1 level X, and that is hella slow to try and get started set up, so I don't think you're ever doing it, but it would be really cool. As far as Tangrowth goes, you've got two good options. Uh, the one in this set lets you do up to 120 damage if the opponent's got less HP remaining than you. It takes two grass and two colors to do that, and it's 50 damage if they have the same or more HP left, but that's kinda cool because you have the self-healing too, so if you flip heads, you're basically doing a 40 damage swing with that. And 120 is going to KO just about everything that's like relevant, so kind of cool. And then Leaf Guard for Grass Colors is 30 and take 20 less next turn, kind of setting yourself up for the stuff there. Reasonable enough defensive option, probably not going to see that much play because we have an auto-healing one as well. Uh, green Renewal on the... which one is this? Uh, Stormfront. Yeah, Stormfront is such a good set. Um, going back to this one, it's like you've got auto-healing every turn, so this plays into the tank role a fair bit more. Keep in mind, Grass types also have Shaman level X that gives them 40 extra HP, so you can have like 170 HP on the level X at this point, kind of insane. And then, yeah, you've got Green Acid for doing status condition stuff, and Reaching Vine is a really good spread move if you can get the energy on, but that's what Tangrowth level X is for, so... Yeah, not too bad. There's a couple of good Tangler in the format as well. One of them forces the opponent to switch with their uh, with one of the bench. That can be good disruption. The other one, if you flip heads, is agility plus a deck search for a grass energy for, for just one. So that can help get to your expensive attacks as well. I actually like this one a little bit more. Although I could definitely see playing uh, Vine and Vite as well. I think there was a reasonable Tangler in this set. Like, it's got, yeah, Absorb and Sleep Powder. There's a Collect one as well, but it's got less HP, so really just depends what you want, to be honest. Um, yeah, kind of cool. So that's all of the level X stuff. We do have a couple of Shinies in here, so I guess I could mention Bagon has a Shiny one here. They've all got Star Barrier, so if they have Energy on them, they don't have a weakness, but their attacks are nothing special, so... And most of the time, the Pokémon they evolve into, not really anything special either, so... Oh well. Cool con a cool concept though. So now on to the rest of the main cards in this set. Honestly, we've talked about most of the best ones, but there's some cool stuff still here. Charizard is going to be a very good deck next set, I think, and uh, Pepper at the very least is keen to try it out. Fire Formation, uh, pick whichever one you want, Tanky, Tensu, who cares. Uh, I guess Ninetales could probably be redrawn as a Beast Warrior. Hmm. Um, yeah, you have 10 more damage for on the Charizard for each of your benched fire Pokémon. So, in theory, if your entire bench is fire Pokémon, you can do 80 damage for one fire energy. That's really cool! All of the Charizard parts, of course, are fire types, so all of your main attackers that you're setting up contribute to the damage here. The problem is, right now, we don't have support Pokémon in the fire role, which is why we're not playing it this set. Next set, we get access to a Rose to Reveal Ninetales that replaces the Clay Doll as part of your light draw setup. And even if it's not the most consistent draw ever, that's going to help a lot. So yeah, we're definitely going to look at this next set. Um, you could technically play it with like Typhlosion, I think, as well at the moment, but that's not got a draw engine associated with it, so I wouldn't really bother. Burning Tail is also here too if you get free energy on the Charizard. 80 damage for fire, double no, double fire and a colorless, keynote, and a discard of fire on Charizard. So that's your big swing, you can potentially hit 130 with that. This makes a great expert belt target too, because you could maybe hit 100 for one at that point. 
uh, which is insane. So, yeah, very cool card. Force loss, unfortunately not amazing. Um, apart from Power Spray existing in the format, uh, Snow Gift just doesn't do enough right now. Uh, this is another one like the Persian that we saw before, where it's like if you evolve into it, you search your deck for a card, and that's great. But, uh, oh yeah, we have Claydol and Yuxi at the moment, we don't need something like that. Uh, Heatran, there is still the Heatran level X if you play a heavy fire discard thing. Uh, maybe you could do something with this. This would be kind of cool with the uh, Dialga, actually. Because for two fire, two colors, you discard the top three of your deck and do 20 extra for fire and metal energy that you discard in that way. So 120 total damage because it's 60 base. Uh, that's pretty cool if you could recycle the Dialga and just keep putting the energy on top of deck every turn. That would be neat. Too bad it's not really possible, but you know. Carbotops, if you discard a Helix Dome or Old Amber, like one of the tr original fossils from your hand, it does 70 for 1. Problem is uh, getting to that point, and 70 for 1 isn't even that special, to be honest. We can do that with, uh, like, uh, we could do more than that with Blaziken. Well, we could before it got banned, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah, and that's a stage 2 fossil, that's never happening. Luxray's got a kind of cool idea here. Uh, Gadget Bolt does 60 for Lightning Double Colorless, but if it's got a tool attached to it, you can do 100 instead and then discard that tool. This has like unique synergy with Expert Belt actually, because you would be able to do 120 damage with the belt and then discard that belt so you don't give up two prizes anymore. You do need to play a lot of tools for that, but there is an enabler, alongside Department Store Go, right? There is an enabler in this set in the Porygon Z... <laughs> you know, Porygon ZG. Uh, I was thinking how to best say that. But yeah, the SP Porygon Z over here, when you bench it, you can shuffle two tools from your discard pile back into the deck. So you can imagine here, we have Versus Seeker in the format as well, so you don't need to play that many copies of Department Store Go. You can imagine a sort of setup here, where maybe next set with double colors, you go like two energy, swing in with this for 120 damage, discard the tool that's making you give up more prizes. When you've discarded a couple of them, you can put Porygon Z down so that you shuffle them back into the deck, search them out with a department store girl, keep going. It's a cool loop, but it's on a stage two and it takes some awkward supporter cards. But at least it's fun, and this Luxray looks neat, so yeah, there is that. Um. Yeah, there really isn't a whole lot else that's even super interesting at the top here. Uh, just stuff like Swallow is like, why is this so bad type of thing? Because it's, uh, yeah, you have to do damage to your own guys just to do 80 for free, which is awful. Uh, there's a Tossa Croak up here that is at least neat if you play Multi or Rainbow Energy. Uh, Convert Blow does 30 for two colors, but if you've got a Psychic on, it's Poison as well. And if you've got a Fighting on, it's 60. So you could just put two psychic, uh, two colored energy on and do it that way. But if you've got like call energy plus rainbow or something, uh, rainbow energy still counts for both. So that's kind of cool. There's a Zapdos over here that looks really neat, but most of Cyrus's Pokemon are awful outside of the dark types, and this is no exception. Uh, Charge Beam for nothing if you've got energy gain on is at least fun. There's a Cherim over here that lets your fire and grass Pokemon take 10 less damage by it from attacks. Whereas the other one that tends to see more play in decks that would want it does 10 more damage instead of taking 10 less. That's usually the better trade-off. Uh, there's Glalie for Stadium Hate, but Stadiums are not particularly big right now, so that's not really super useful. Uh, there's a Pichu that's kind of cool, but no energy. Look at the top 5 of your deck and uh, put one of them into hand. If you want to play Raichu level X at some point with Raichu Prime, maybe you go through this, but only because there's a Pikachu that gives you energy out of the discard uh, if you have evolved from Pichu, so yeah. There's a couple of neat cards here that rely on having tool cards equipped to them. Uh, boosted Voltage with the Raichu here for one lightning. If you have a tool attached, I mean it's 20 base damage, but if you have a tool attached it also does 20 to each of the opponent's bench that isn't evolved. So some decks are really going to get messed up by that. And this could be an interesting second attack to use after you have done Voltage Shoot with Raichu level X. Like you level up the Raichu, you snipe, uh, you've got four energy attached I think, because if I remember rightly, 
No, Raichu is Lightning Lightning Colorless, and I think you only discard two to snipe 80. So like you do a snipe 80 and then you get to do an extra attack because of Raichu level X's body, and that extra attack could just be boosted voltage, which then does X amount, probably 20, but if you've got an expert belt, it does 40, and then 20 to all of your opponent's bench. There's something there, but it relies on the opponent playing like an SP deck, which is not necessarily going to be the case here. Rapidash is a hate against SP. This is probably the closest Rapidash ever gets to being playable, and it's still garbage, but oh well. Uh, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done by Rapidash to opponent's SP. One problem, uh, well, two problems really. No, sorry, three problems. Luxray can go around it because it just gusts up. Garchomp can go around it because it snipes. Dialga goes around it because it negates the body. SP decks already have counters for this kind of thing, it's not really going to work. And then Raticate I want to mention just partly because Recruit is annoying as hell, but mostly because it's almost there, it just doesn't have enough HP, and the Rattata is only 30 HP, so it's even worse. Extend Fang for a single colorless does 60 if you have a tool attached. If you put Expert Belt on this thing, that's doing 80 for 1, which is impressive, but the problem is you've only got a 90 HP 2 prizer in play at that point. 90 is not a hard number to hit nowadays. So you're going to give up 2 prizes too easily with this thing. And that's just no good. Recruit is annoying though. Look at the opponent's hand, discard the supporter that you find there and use the effect as this attack. That's irritating as hell. There's a Sceptile in this set, well there's two Sceptile I think in this set, but the main one here is it heals when it gets a Grass Energy attached to it, and does 20 for every Grass that's attached here. The obvious synergies that we have with previous Sceptile, one of them has got Wild Growth to double your Grass Energy that's on your Grass Pokemon, so it does 40 for every Energy that's attached, and then the other one is Energy Trance, so you get to move the Grass Energy around. Don't bother with this guy, he's bad. Uh, 130 HP is the only plus side. Oh, and then I forgot about this, right, <laughs> we're so far in, and I forgot probably the most important card of this set outside of the uh, Expert Belt and Kengar here. Oh, Spirit Tomb is a bot. This is probably the best Spirit Tomb that we, I mean, there are Spirit Tomb that have seen play in the future as well. It gets some good cards, but this is probably the best overall one. As long as Spirit Tomb is active, neither player can play trainer cards in the hand. This is just item lock, so long as you're active, it's so dumb. Doesn't have any weakness, 60 HP is pretty low, but doesn't have any weakness, is resistant to Colas, which is actually more of a detriment than a positive here, because you can lock this guy in, but still, only one retreat too, very good with Unknown Q. Darkness Grace for zero energy is the attack that you're generally going to see here, because this is not just a hit and run target, this actually ends up being very good as a... Uh, support Mon too. You search your deck for a, a card that evolves on one of your Pokemon, put it onto that Pokemon, then put a damage counter on the Spirit Tomb. It is Make-A-Wish from the Jirachi and Legends Awakened. It's the Legend Awakened? No, that's the, that's the hid no, Hidden Legends, that's the one. The, uh, the Gen 3 set. Very, very strong effect on here, and this ends up ushering in a much slower paced error than what we're, or like, and no, part of the game than what we used to. Because we don't really want to play that many rare candy anymore in a lot of the decks, because now Sableye, uh, not Sableye, uh, sp usually it is Sableye, Spirit Tomb stops you from having trainer cards played, right? So it stops the opponent from doing all of their SP shenanigans too quickly, because they can't do Poke Turns, they can't do Energy Gain, because that's still an item, they can't do SP Radar, so a lot of their engine just gets shut down and you get to slowly evolve all of your guys, it works really, really well with the Gengars and everything too. Very, very irritating card. There's, a, there's just going to be a lot of use for it in the end, and uh, yeah, I don't know, it's a pain in the ass, but what are you going to do? Other than that, I don't actually think there's anything really to, to note and for the rest of the mods here. I think the, the Kurgunk is kind of annoying because it's got Astonish and that effect is just a pain if you hit the right card. There's a Haunter in here that lets you poison the opponent if it takes damage whilst in the active, but eh, it's still not that impressive. It's got less HP and than the other options, so that's bad. And if you really want to put uh, Rapidash in 
the contention. You do technically have Ascension from Ponyta over here, so I suppose you could try something like Charizard, Rapidash or whatever, but it's it's not going to work. So, just saying that right now, it's not actually very good. So, oh well. That's honestly about it. Uh, this set doesn't have a ton of new strategies involved per se, but Expert Belt alone recontextualizes a ton of stuff in here, and Spiritomb is going to make it so that slower evolving strategies might actually be playable. You've got to watch your item counts now, like the deck I played last week would not really do very well in the face of Spiritomb. So yeah, got to watch what you're, what you're using in stuff this week. So. Yeah, we'll see how that ends up playing out as as we go. I would expect to see Gengar from Matt. Uh, there's a crazy deck actually that Pepper's been testing that doesn't look like it should be very good, but given the fact that we ban Blaziken and uh, Infernape, is going to be pretty strong. And I don't know what Sai is going to play. I'm between Arceus and another deck that I wanted to play before but just didn't see it being strong enough. Now it has a much more concrete plan with some of the cards out of this set, so we'll see if it works out. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Once again, we're below 50 minutes this time, so that's always a plus. And uh, yeah, until next time when we actually do the games to this, have a good one.